In the icy waters of the Arctic Sea, time seems to have frozen. It is in fact the scene of an extraordinary escapade. A giant crab, here because of one man's actions, is building an empire to match its insatiable appetite. King crabs were not originally found on the European coast. They were introduced here. They appeared in the north of Norway towards the end of the 70s. In just a few decades, they have conquered the northern European Arctic coast. How far will the giant crabs expand their territory? Should we be worried? Scientists are continuing to discover the resources and adaptability of this crustacean invader. They are evolutionarily very successful. Their leg span can reach up to 180 centimeters, and they can weigh up to 10 kilograms. The king crab is one of the largest shellfish in the underwater world. They are also called red king crabs. Their scientific name is Paralithodes Kamchaticus. This is Latin for stone crab that comes from Kamchatka, the peninsula in the Russian Far East. Marine biologists started to worry when the crabs were found in Norwegian waters at the end of the 70s. I remember one time I was diving and uh, I saw a king crab that was eating a uh, bivalve and I, 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 I got, got closer to the crab and suddenly it just races up on the back uh, legs and, and having the claws right in the uh, up in the water and I was so scared so I went back and start to get another way away from the crab so it's, it's really frightening. The water is very cold and highly oxygenated. The Arctic seas have a rich biodiversity. Over 4,000 species have been discovered in the Barents Sea, more than in any other of the Arctic seas. This inventory is far from complete. Like all polar systems, the Barents Sea Arctic ecosystem is characterized by high biological productivity and home to many rare species. The ecosystem is very rich, but also very fragile, and not strong enough to withstand a predator as powerful as the giant crab. King crab is continuing to thrive in this hitherto preserved environment and is depopulating the seabed. This is resulting in a change in the balance of the species. The 
King crab has an insatiable appetite. It's an omnivore, and it devours all prey that comes within its reach. Bugnes Port has 200 inhabitants. It is 500 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle and is dependent on its cod and salmon trade. It's one of the first villages in Norway where the king crabs appeared. The first catch in 1977 caused a commotion. The public was curious as well as scared. The fishermen who caught the first king crabs were proud of their catch, but they didn't know what to think of these unusual crabs. How did the crabs come to Norway? At the beginning of the last century, they were only found in the North Pacific. Americans, Japanese, and Russians fished and sold king crabs. King crab sells for a good price, and the export trade is successful. Stalin, and then Khrushchev, was convinced that this miraculous crab would help to feed people on the shores of European Russia. Yuri Orlov, a Soviet scientist, embarked on a project in 1961. Orlov captured crabs that lived on the Kamchatka coast. His aim was to move them to the other side of the continent. Orlov tried out different types of transport, helicopters, planes, trains. He took thousands of crabs through Siberia. They traveled from Vladivostok to Murmansk, a journey of more than 10,000 kilometers. Many crabs perished during the journey. Orlov didn't give up until he had achieved what he had set out to do. In the late 60s, a selection of fertilized females arrived safely at their destination. They were placed in the water six miles from Murmansk in the Kola Gulf, where it opens up into the Barents Sea. The king crabs multiplied quickly. By the end of the 70s, they had colonized the Russian waters and moved into Norway. They followed the northern coast of Scandinavia and descended towards the south. In 2009, a king crab was caught in Bergen. The king crabs should have been deterred by the warmer waters as they headed southwards. However, they moved on to colonize the northern fjords. The maze of steep and plunging cliffs does not discourage the king crab. This concerns Liz Lindahl, the senior marine biologist at the Institute of Marine Research in Norway. So I was here also for several years ago before the king crab came into the inner parts of the fjord. So it's a, this is the reference point. And as you uh, have told me, that now the king crab has come. Um, and we need to look how it looked like now. And we compare it to what it was before. Yes. <clears throat> Just me here. So, now we are approximately here. So this is the places where uh, we are a bit afraid that that might be too much king crab and that had a, maybe a, a, a big impact on the Arctic fauna. Yeah, because this is fauna here is the same as you find in the Spitsbergen area. Yeah, and all the and, way up in the Barents And if, it, if it's uh, removed from here, we don't know where it can be replaced from. It is still unknown whether the king crab has fully colonized the Porsanga fjord or if some areas remain unaffected. Crabs move quickly and are difficult to locate. 
So how deep is it here? Uh, we are approaching now this uh, location where we expect to find some crabs and here's yeah. probably some uh, small fishes. You can't detect them using a sonar device. The only way to know where they are is to dive in and look for indications. I would like to see on the bottom animals if we find any fingerprints yes. from the king crab. Yes. So if there are any bivalves that is crushed, yes. or any sea stars that are missing arms, yes. that's what I want to look for. Okay. You can't always see the king crabs under the marine vegetation. There are definitely king crabs in the Porsanga Fjord, but it's difficult to say how many exactly. So the divers collect traces of their eating to establish the density of their colony. Biologists examined discarded shells in order to determine whether the predator was a crab rather than a seal or a seabird. In certain places, the seabed is covered with shell remains. The wildlife that is usually present here has disappeared. The crabs roam the almost deserted seabed in search of any remaining prey. It's more than likely that they are responsible for this carnage. <laughs> 